Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with red trim, fighting out of and representing his hometown of Oxnard, California. He weighed in at a ready 129 and one half pounds with a record of 33 wins, two losses, 24 of his wins have come by way of knockout. Here is the former IBF junior lightweight champion of the world, currently ranked the number eight super featherweight by the WBA, introducing the challenger, Roberto Grandpa Garcia. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion, ready to fight on my left in the red corner, entering the ring wearing silver trunks with blue and red trim, fighting out of Miami, Florida by way of Guantanamo, Cuba. He weighed in at the limit of 130 pounds even. He's a gold medalist in the 1992 Olympic Games. As a professional, his record is unblemished at 23 wins, no losses, 14 of his wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making the second defense of his title. Here is the undefeated WBA super featherweight champion of the world, Joel El Cepillo Casamayor. Once again, a referee in charge, Kenny Bayless, now to give instructions. 12 rounds of championship boxing schedule. Okay, let's help, fellas. I want the both of you to be win over the lose. I want you to obey my commands at all times and keep the fight clean at all times. Any area in this area is a good punch. Any area here is a clean punch. Anything below that area? It's low. Any questions from the red corner? Any questions from the blue corner? Good luck, fellas. Touch your legs. A few Casamayor fans here, but the crowd uh, favoring uh, Garcia. Casamayor, tricky, fast southpaw, in superb condition. Moving and punching are his game. Classic stick and move, in and out, excellent boxing skills. The respectful Roberto Garcia, who says Casamayor deserves everything in the world for his sacrifice. Ringwise, not a particularly fast starter, told us he heard Casamayor would try to take him out inside three. If so, he better be able to solve the champion real soon. Casamayor. I think the first two rounds are going to be very, very key for both fighters to establish themselves. Who's going to take the lead? Who's going to do exactly what? And any adjustments need to be made. Casamayor, not known as a big one-punch KO artist, but working on his power. Very accurate, crisp. He's a sharpshooter. He feels his biggest weapons are the straight left and the right jab. Very busy, though. He throws a lot of punches. He, Garcia can fight and has good skills, but it's hard to be afraid of a guy whose nickname is Grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> he got that nickname when he was very young. Fighting since he was five, he said someone just started calling, calling him Grandpa, and it just stuck. And he'll have to keep the pressure on Casamayor, who's actually four years older than him. Uh, he'll have to keep that pressure on, land heavy punches, slow Casimir down. As Bobby said, force a brawl or he'll be eating a host of jabs. Garcia's been down eight times, three times against Diego Perales. But this kid Casimir, Bobby, he's not even been remotely threatened at this point. He's, he's lost only a handful of rounds. Well, I'll tell you what, though, there was a combination, there was an exchange while you were talking, where Garcia did just that, landed a good right hand, and to his credit, Casimir came back with a sharp right hook counter being a southpaw, the speed is going to be a big factor for Garcia to deal with, but Garcia looks to be a little heavier handed. So this will be interesting. Casamayor's sharp slashing punches caused all kinds of problems, cut problems for his last opponent. The guy that drew diagrammed earlier, Radford Beasley, whose face was rendered bloody and battered. He can surgically pick you apart. He told us he trained for this fight, Casimir, as if his opponent was Felix Trinidad. That's how hard he worked. He wants to set a fast pace, make Garcia work. Garcia known for his toughness early on. That's when his firepower is best. Very strong the first four rounds. Then uh, he kind of fizzles. He's not working in behind the jab. There's a good overhand right. Didn't land real clean. What Garcia needs to do, though, is step with the jab. Push Casimir back to a corner, to the ropes. Keep him all bounce. When he's going backwards, he can never hurt you. He can score, but he can't hurt you. Mexico! Mexico! 
Garcia is still very dry. Looks like he hasn't even broken much of a sweat. Garcia out of Oxnard, California. Casamayor out of Cuba originally. Moving to Miami and now training out of Van Nuys, California. Well, the chess match has started, ladies and gentlemen, and it could be boring for a couple of rounds. This is Boris Spassky and Bobby Fischer here in the opening round. Not Casamayor versus Garcia. Bang! That's all right. So, what I want you to do now, more jabs. More jabs. Okay. Mr. Zuman, go to Keep your heads up. Mira, por tu derecha. Yeah. Okay. Look straight ahead. Trabajo un poquito más con tu jab. Okay. You got to work the jab a little more. Pendulo, pendulo, gancho, pendulo, jab. Okay. Jab, jab, hit the body. Go for the body. Eso es por el próximo round. Okay. Do that for the next round. You gotta break. You really gotta hit him hard. Don't be afraid. Just go for the body all the time. John Gonzalez, our translator, and Juan Garcia in the corner of Roberto Garcia. That's uh, Roberto's father. It's a family affair there with brother Danny as well. Roberto very close to his dad, Eduardo. And Joe Goosen, the always direct to the point, ebullient trainer of Joel Casamayor. You may recall he trained Ben Tacky in his dramatic come from behind win over Roberto Garcia right here on Showtime. You know, it's hard to give that first round to anybody, so I called it even. Very little punching was done, very little scoring was done. The heavier shots by Garcia, maybe a couple of more jabs and counters by Casamayor, so nothing serious. Oh, look out. WWF tactics employed by Casamayor, who hears it from the crowd. You know what's funny, Steve? I saw in his eyes as he did that, he swung and missed, and Garcia was coming. I saw a little bit of panic in Casamayor's eyes, and there he caught a tail end of a good left hook. He's showing a great deal of respect to Garcia's power, so I guess he felt something early. Come back clean, there we go. Watch your head, step back, watch your head. Grandpa's doing all right here at the outset. Following the standard feeling out process in round one. Now just a lot of posing. Casamayor missing with the left. Now he's starting to go to the body of the way Goosen told him to his trainer. Trying to back Garcia up, and now a backhand move there illegally by Casamayor got away with it. Casamayor may be a bit frustrated. Garcia perhaps posing a bit of an awkward problem, at least up to this point. We'll see if Casamayor can solve it. I think what uh, Garcia needs to do too is he's throwing one, one, two. I think he needs to put three, four, and five behind that, or he's not going to catch up with Casamayor because he's very quick. And that initial reaction off the first two punches, he's out of harm's way. Casamayor 23 and 0 with 14 knockouts, 2 and 0 in world title bus. Left hand that was blocked by the right glove of Garcia. Garcia showing some good reflexes and sharp defense of his own. Former IBF junior lightweight champion Garcia. And he beat Harold Warren, two successful defenses. And then he lost the title to Diego Corrales. I'm with South of the border here, Steve. And Kenny Bayless has a word with Casamayor. Best punch that Casamayor has landed in the South of the border. Again, the close pal of Roberto Garcia, Fernando Vargas, looking on, looking uh, very serious and concerned. Comes off that great fight, what many thought was the fight of the year, and the, the loss to Felix Trinidad. But now he's in the cheering section for Garcia. When he steps over to his right, just walk up to it. He's going to break back to his left. When he breaks back to his left, 
Very A wild swing and a miss here. You see, <laughs> Gasimar just ducks under the jab and picks, just picks Garcia up like it's uh, pro wrestling. Maybe the best punch he's landed all night. He slips underneath south of the border, but that is way south of the border. It was very clean and very low. Well, after a little action in round one, Garcia started connecting, particularly with his right hand in round two, frustrating Casamayor, who exhibited uh, good speed in that round. That's his thing. See, Casamayor is throwing more punches, and they're a little quicker, and they're getting home. And Casamayor starting to land with more frequency here now, and Garcia getting a little wild. Better be careful because Casamayor is a good counter puncher. Again, a wild swing and a miss by Garcia. Garcia cannot load up with Casamayor. He's too quick. His reflexes are just too good for that. Casamayor looking uh, more confident here in round three. can tell by the fact that he lowers his hands. He realizes his quickness and speed would be too much for Garcia. He feels probably in his mind that Garcia just can't catch him. Well, let's see if Garcia shows some more offense, or rather Casamayor shows some offense here. Right now, Garcia is trying to corner him, and he's just not being able to find the find the rhythm. He's tried to walk into a left hook, try to walk Casimir into left hook, but again, he's missing the rhythm, and now he's eating left hands. Quick little right-left combination to the head by Acasa Mayor. They weren't heavy punches, but they'll get your attention. That was a slip. That was a half a slip, half a hook. Talking and then hit him with the hook as was off balance. Clean, no, it's a clean no call. Garcia jumping on Casamayor. Casamayor's mm -hmm. never been down. He landed two good shots, and Casamayor's holding on a lot now. Casamayor just seems to be waiting for something. There's that elusiveness again of Casamayor evading that wild left hook by Garcia. But Casamayor is missing. But can Garcia make him pay? Well, as we talked about in the open, we thought this would be his best test so far, and so far it has not uh, been anything but a test. Yeah, the experience factor of Garcia seems to be paying off, but it is early. Casamayor averages about five rounds. This should be a long fight. Steve, I got a feeling if there's no cuts that this is a distance-type fight, especially the way the chess match has started and the way that the action has not started so much. Casamayor has been stunned only once in his career. That was against the Korean back. Tiene mucho tiempo. Yeah, yeah. You got lots of time. Well, don't take better side. It's a jab. Take your okay. time. Use that jab. Don't wait on that. And keep your guard face recto. Just keep your punches Just straight. Keep your punches straight. Start using doble jab, recto izquierdo, okay? Uses a double okay. just counter punch. Balance, okay? You gotta find, you gotta find okay. the balance and keep you the watch pressure. The slip. There's, a, there's a nice left hook that that's sort, sort of a pull, and then he just pulls him behind the ear again. And more of a pull than a than an actual knockdown. Just kind of pull him. But then he tests to see if he's hurt. Lands a nice right hand on top of the head. And believe me, getting hit on top of that hurts. That right hand went right through the gloves and a nice double left hook behind it. Those punches were his best scores in that round. Garcia very aggressive there towards the end of round three. He said he'd considered quitting after the Ben Taki fight, but then along came this bout. Just too much prestige and money to pass up. A shot at the title. He wants to prove those wrong who feels he's an 11 to 1 underdog against Casamayor. And he's fighting like he's doing that. He 
knows this is a tough task. On top of that, Casamayor is a lefty. But so far, he's been doing a pretty good job of neutralizing Casamayor's potent jab. Oh, big left hook off the head by Casamayor. Garcia shakes his head no as if to say it didn't hurt him. Garcia looked at him, didn't, didn't even flinch, didn't bat an eye. Very rugged young man, Roberto Garcia. It's interesting in our meeting yesterday, Casamayor told us that he feels that Garcia is strong over the first four rounds. So according to the champion, Casamayor, this should be Garcia's last good round. We'll see. Well, I think part of that's a little deceiving, too. He said he only has four good rounds, and then he fades. Then he has nothing, as he put it, technically translated. But he hasn't made him work for this first three or four. He hasn't tired him out. He hasn't pressed him. He hasn't punished him. So he should have a lot more than even Casimir would think. Yeah, it doesn't seem like Casimir is making, making Garcia work as much as he should. That may have been an accident. No. A headbutt there. No. Okay. That was uh, right. a bit of a butt, as you see Garcia wiping off the forehead. They bumped into each other, and then Casimir just pushed him, shoved him. The heads came together. And that uh, often does happen with southpaws against a conventional fighter. The feet get tangled and the heads collide. Casamayor spun to the ground at the 155 mark of round three. He was ruled a no knockdown correctly. Good job by Kenny Bayless. And then they clash heads at the 140 mark here of round four. 30 seconds left in the round. Casamayor started this round off, Steve, started this round off pretty effective, and he's faded a little bit since. Garcia landing the right hand now, a little more regularity. The little men of boxing bringing out the celebrities in the crowd here tonight. Packed house here at Texas Station in Las Vegas. Little Nicky, Adam Sandler on the right, and former Saturday Night Live star along with Adam Sandler, Rob Schneider on the left of your screen. Two funny men on hand here. And. Uh, one of the all-time greats, five-time world champion, Sugar Ray Leonard, in the crowd as well. Okay. Tú eres inteligente, okay? Tú primero con tu job. Cuando tú tengas tu job, siempre. Use that job. When you use that job. Okay. That's how it works for you. No, 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 más rectos así. Remember, keep it straight. He doesn't like that. Let's go on top of this. Just another round, brother. Just another round. All right, we begin round number five. We said at the outset, this could be the toughest test for Joel Casamayor. And so far, Roberto Garcia has looked pretty good. Do you think uh, Casamayor looks confident here, Bobby? Well, he doesn't look as confident as he did earlier because he's just been in the you know, first four rounds already and he's not gotten his way at all. He's had a few good moments of brilliance but not like normal normally he goes in does what he wants and he walks out he performs he's going to either rise to the occasion here or stock may come down just a little bit well he may be uh, confused just a bit here by uh, the bit of awkward style employed by garcia his corner told him that the jab is key and i believe they're correct once he has that jab moving and in garcia's face sets up everything else no question casamayor generally with superior boxing skills in the past, they've been able to control the action and pick his opponents apart, but so far, not the case here against Garcia. Garcia landed a nice right uppercut left hook. They were solid, and they shook customer just a little bit. And that gets the crowd going, mostly behind the Californian. Casimir is consistently waiting for Garcia to come in to counter. He's not leading and then countering the punches that Garcia has, and he's not really being busy enough. And Garcia showing more quickness than I thought he had. Casamayor just elbowed. Garcia 
see what it shows. Yeah, he's been using a lot None of, of this. a lot of dirty okay. tactics here. I've noticed tonight. Use the shoulder and an elbow inside. Yeah. He, he got away with an elbow earlier as well. Also a backhand, you recall, and also he tried to uh, prop him with his entire body earlier. A wrestling move. Garcia keeping his defense tight, keeping the pressure on, not quite as much as I would have preferred if I were his trainer, but doing a pretty nice job so far. And all of that, of course, could be uh, signs of frustration for Casamayor. Nice right hand to the body by Garcia. Of course, much too early to tell, but that is just, that is never going to land. You, I could see that one coming. Telegraph that from Reno, right? Yeah, that was bad. Garcia, an 11 to 1 underdog, thinking major upset here. Round five. As we approach the final 30 seconds. The chance of Robert for Garcia. Got tremendous support here in the crowd. Garcia switched to a southpaw stance briefly there, but once again, he's throwing the one big right hand, and that's it. Bang, bang. And now, jab right hand, jab right hand, or like one hook. He needs to throw combinations, he needs more punches and bunches. Casamayor making him miss, but not making him pay. You're, you're going to be the new champ. Garcia working his way in there, doing what he needs to, pressing the attack, trying to make Casimir miss. There's a nice right hand and a left hook that really staggered Casimir just briefly, but they were clean. The two best punches landed around. Now a lot to go to intactics. Watch Casimir's shoulder. <laughs> elbow, elbow and shoulder right in his face. Now that's straight out dirty. That's that's some nasty tactics right there. And the round is a big wild right hand that it was just outrageous to even throw. That was telegraphed. He could have saw that coming from the other side of the county. But keeping the pressure on still being pretty effective. I gave that round to Garcia. Garcia has been talking to Casamayor. Casamayor jumps all over Garcia to begin the sixth round. The left hander, very aggressive here. It's as if he's saying, I've just about had enough from you. There's a left hand, and that staggers Garcia. The speed, and you don't see those punches, Dean. Another left hand. There it is. Through the defensive club. And Garcia is being rocked. Casavera wants to end it right here in round six. Kenny Bayless doing all he can to split him up. One point. He took the point away from him because he kept hitting him behind the head and holding. And he said the break stop punching, and he kept punching in the back of Garcia's head. And he took the point. How interesting! Casamayor losing a point. All the dirty tactics taking their toll. And you know what? He deserved to lose the point. It wasn't like it was the first warning of any kind. But what it does? A straight left hand, right on the nose of Garcia, Bobby. It allows Garcia to get back in the game by scoring reasons. Tough break for uh, Casamayor, who's clearly oh destroying Garcia, but then Casamayor walked right into a punch. Garcia landed good, but he's too hurt to really muster up the power he needs. What an assault here in round six of a round. Another straight left. Garcia looks like he may be ready to go. Garcia oh, has a pretty, pretty good chin, Steve, but here's the problem. This kid is too accurate. Casemiro is not missing him with any of those left hands. Garcia just keeps buckling and then hangs in there. Casemiro oh, smothering Garcia with punches. Huge left hands to the head. Non-stop by Casamayor. I have a feeling he's not going to make the end of the round. It's just a feeling of look in his eyes. Garcia is really in trouble. And Casamayor, unrelenting. Another straight left hand. That's been his big weapon. Forget the jab. He's just gone for the heavy lumber. There's another straight left hand right on the head. 
Casemiro is not a big one-punch knockout artist. If this was Rosalino Freitas, the fight would be over. But he has the speed, he has the numbers of punches. Attrition will get Garcia eventually. And his power has improved. And that's on display right here. <laughs> Garcia trying to weather this assault, oh, this step storm. Back, step back, please. In round six, he's got 15 more seconds. And he may just weather it. I didn't think he could do it. He looked too hurt. But now we have to find out Casemiro has punched himself out. Blood streaking from the right eye oh, of Garcia. Oh, 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 oh. A cut has been opened up around the right eye of Garcia. We'll see where it is if it clouds his vision. What a round by Casemiro. Listen up. You're not doing too good right now, but you got to take a deep breath. you got to try to walk around this. Early on, Casamayor came out, and he came out this round with a vengeance. And he lands that left hand, and that's what started everything. Garcia walks right into it. I don't believe you ever saw it, Steve. You see the look in his eyes as if he couldn't focus, and he started it. Now here he won't clinch, and he starts hitting him behind the head. There you see one of them. I didn't see the other ones, too, but... I know Kenny Bales had warned him and warned him, and eventually the point was deducted. The cut looks to be on the side near the top, the eyebrow of the right eye, and that could pose some problems. Now, for the first seconds of round six, Casamayor threw straight left after straight left. It was a painful three minutes for uh, Garcia, but Casamayor docked one point for holding and hitting. No, so the round, instead of being a 10, eight or even a 10-7 round becomes like a 9-8 round, which keeps, at least scoring-wise, keeps Garcia in the fight. He's landing a nice right hand. Nice right hand indeed by uh, uh, Garcia. Well, the fans at home have Garcia ahead convincingly. I didn't have him up like that, and after the last round, it moved a whole lot closer. But I had Garcia winning the fight, and I think that Casamayo also recognized that he was having a problem and he came out in the last round like, like an animal with a purpose. The blood doesn't seem to be bothering Garcia, not affecting him adversely. He seems to be outside the eye, on the right of the eye. He's very aggressive here in round seven. Turned into a very interesting fight here now. So I had a 3-2 and one even, but the fact of the matter is that the point was deducted from Casemiro plus the knockdown, the jockey round, but Casemiro still won the last round, so it winds up being one of those fights which 3 2 1 even, but even those 3 2 in rounds, I have a draw in scoring. The gritty game, Garcia continues to eat a lot of left. Straight left hands landing almost at will by Casemiro. That right hand was blocked by the left glove, Joel Casemiro. Casemiro has come alive, he got his wake up call. Round six, there's the blood. He's bleeding profusely down the right side of his face, Garcia. But it doesn't seem to be going into his eye. Thus blurring the vision. He's doing a lot of boxing, he's sitting back. He's not stepping to Garcia the way he was. So you look at the eye now. It's not hurting his vision, so we'll go ahead. Now you can hear the ringside physician say what, uh, what I just said. It's not hurting his vision, so go ahead. Seven watch continues. Kenny Bayless warning Casamayor, watch the head. Now, well, nothing wrong with Casamayor's confidence now. effective one for the champion. But I'm not sure why the champion has laid back so much in this round. The last round was, he was so dominant on the attack. Why not do it again? Not as consistent as he usually is, correct.
It is a family affair with Garcia, as we mentioned, his father and brother in the corner, but Garcia's mom, Virginia, can't bear to watch her son fight. So while Roberto's in the ring, she stays back at the hotel with Roberto's sons, uh, Roberto 5 and Eduardo 2. There they are in the room. Not unusual, of course, in this sport. Very difficult for certain relatives, particularly mothers, to watch who wants to see their loved ones get beat up. As we take you back to the corner, and uh, there's Dad, Eduardo, working on his son, Roberto. You hear, you, hear, you hear what they're saying there. Listen to me, you gotta go. Round number eight. Let's get it over to uh, Jim Gray for a report on Garcia's eye. Jim? All right, Steve, I talked to Dr. James Game. He uh, looked at the eye of Garcia during the stoppage in the last round. He said the cut is not very deep and it is not affecting his vision at all. And he is in no peril at this time of stopping the fight because of the current condition of the eye. Steve? All right, Jim, that's what we uh, thought from here at uh, our vantage point. As round eight continues, and what is turning into uh, what has turned into a uh, a stirring uh, bout. Well, you know, I'm really still surprised. Casimiro, went, the round that he came forward, round six, he and almost annihilated Garcia. And Garcia, I said before, couldn't win the fight going backwards. And I don't understand why now he's moving. I mean, maybe his arms are tired. Maybe he's punched himself out a little bit. Maybe he's just conserving energy. But this isn't the statement he wants to make coming off such a resounding, terrific round. Well, let's see if Casamayor does have it in him to end this in dramatic fashion. After struggling a bit early on against Roberto Garcia, and then coming on real strong in round six, but not able to put Garcia away in the seventh. Now, this is round eight. With a point deduction once again from Casamayor, neutralized the knockdown, took away the advantage that gives him in the scoring, but he did win the round either way. And he won the last one, so now he's made this fight different direction. Well, if this were to be stopped, it could be very interesting on the judges' scorecards. Fans at home only give Casamayor round six and two. As we come up to the final minute of round eight, scheduled for 12 for the WBA Super Featherweight title. Garcia in the white trunks, the former champion, Casamayor, the champion making his second defense. Oh, a heavy body punch by Garcia. And Kenny Bayless is saying it was south of the border. I thought it was on the belt line, Steve. I didn't see that to be low. And the belt line, as we all know, is legal. Well, it was borderline. But uh, Kenny Bayless being very cautious. Garcia has a little bit of fire back his eyes. He's got a clear head now. You really get a good look at that uh, eye right now with less than 30 seconds left in round uh, eight. Mark Ratner, the executive director of the Nevada Athletic Commission, and one of the best in the business. Look out. That was a slip. Signal to us that the cut by Garcia's eye was caused by a punch, not a headbutt. It was a slip, and it was one of Garcia's best combinations right before he slipped, connecting against Casamayor. Better round for Garcia, Steve. Yeah. Well, it's been an awkward fight here tonight. Let's go inside the ropes with Bobby Chet. Southpaws and elusive styles can sometimes do this. But watch here, there's one that's kind of a half a left hook and a throw to the ground. Then a little later on, a little push, a shove. Look out, look out, look out, look out, look out. The shoulder back right to the jaw. Bells has seen enough. Here's a little bit of punching behind the head and holding and hitting behind the head. And he's not going to let this fight get out of control. He takes a point away. And they're fighting a little more cleanly now. And another low low took place in this last round. Now, see, that was on the belt line. That was not low. That was a legal blow. I agree. By the rule. Let's go, go, go. That was on the belt line. Kenny Bayless, who earlier deducted a point from Joel Casamayor for a low blow. Uh, cautioning 
Roberto Garcia. Round nine. Although we've come close, there have been no official knockdowns thus far in the fight. But there has, there was some official staggering. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Plenty of official staggering in six Yeah. Oh, stop! Step back. There we go. Watch it, watch it. New category we just uh, came up with. Sort of a delayed reaction as he went down to the seat of his pants. He goes down for the ninth time in his career. First time of this fight. I think it was a little bit of a flash knockdown. It wasn't a big hurt for knockdown. He just walked into a shot and it just stopped him. Yeah, he got up quickly. He's got two minutes to get through this round. And again, he's being pummeled on top of the head. He takes it. He goes down. Down goes the ref, too. seen enough, Steve. And the sportsmanship here is the two and grace. Casamayor hugging. Roberto Garcia, tremendous respect. That big left hand of Joe Casamayor coming through here tonight. You know, sometimes it's a funny sport. The two men will try and beat each other to death for the first wherever amount of rounds the fight goes, and then immediately upon hearing the bell ends the fight, they hug. Very strange sport. It is a different breed. There's a brouhaha in the stands right now. I guess between uh, the two factions, those supporting Garcia and those behind Casmayor, this is very unfortunate. Hey, he's okay. It's off to our right across the way over there, and let's hope they're able to control that action in the stands right now as things really get ugly around us. But a terrific fight in the ring between Joe Casamayor and Roberto Garcia, who hung in there as long as he could. Casamayor, an 11 to 1 favorite, able to prevail and remain undefeated and keep his title. He retains his WBA Super Featherweight crown, his second successful defense. Now 24-0, and add another knockout to his belt, 15. I was impressed with the way he fought and when he fought. He did a little too much running and moving for my taste. I know that was part of their strategy to get Garcia tired, but they didn't really get Garcia that tired. They had to make him work. When he came out in the sixth round, he looked terrific, but I still don't believe he beats Corral. Garcia being consoled by Fernando Vargas. Now congratulating Joel Casamayor as they work on that right eye of Garcia. First knockdown is a simple straight left hand right here. Bang. He didn't see it. He was a little off balance. His feet were squared up, and down he went. We'll look at it again. Watch his feet. Well, you can't really see his feet here, but they're squared up, and he gets hit right in the button. He just goes down. And you can see he's not really glassy-eyed. He shaking his head. He's basically okay. But at the end of the fight, he was not okay. That you see his legs come out under him. He doesn't stand up well, and he gets hit a shot on top of the head right there. That really rocks him. Look at his legs. That shot on top of the temple, unbelievable. Not quite the left hook that Ben Tacky gave him, but an overhand left, nonetheless, that did the job. Oh, look at his reaction after that left hand. You talk about being wobbled and having that one right there in the temple. You see him, his legs are never the same, and his eyes roll back in his head to a degree. Probably a very, very good call to stop the fight to prevent any more harm from possibly happening to Garcia. So Garcia has now lost three of his last four. The former IBF junior lightweight champ drops to 33 and three. No shame to lose to a champion the caliber of Joel Casamayor. I'm not sure that his power has increased any from the last time out. And although Garcia does have a pretty good gym, I think the speed factor and I've always said, I've said it many times, speed times mass equals destructive power. The fact that Garcia didn't see a lot of the shots helped to hurt him more. He's still not a big puncher, Casamayor, but he's dangerous because he's very quick and he throws very accurately in good numbers. All right, let's go up into the ring and uh, Jimmy Lennon Jr. with the official word. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time of 1 minute 14 seconds in round number 9. Our referee in charge, Kenny Bayless, stops the contest. 
the winner by way of technical knockout. He is still undefeated and still the WBA Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Joel El Cepillo Casamayor. We'll give you the particulars later, but interestingly, I got to point this out because we get it so quickly. And these guys do such a great job here. Our stage manager, Joel Farbstein. How about this? Two of the three judges had Garcia ahead. And another one had it uh, even, but we'll give you the exact numbers uh, a little bit later after we give you the online scoring uh, as well. I only had Casa Mayor ahead by a point, so mm -hmm. I understand. And there's just one round swings, the two point change, so. Yep. Okay. So we're standing by for post fight interviews. Let's get it up to Jim Gray. Jim? All right. Thank you very much. Joel, congratulations to you. Luis, Luis, we need you to interpret sure, right now. Sure. Was this more trouble than you had expected tonight? ¿Tú pensabas que esta pelea fue más difícil de lo que tú esperabas? No, yo no es difícil porque yo me entrené para esta pelea y hice lo que me dijo en la esquina. Cuatro o cinco rounds y después no pegamos y nos vamos. Él estaba bloqueado en cinco rounds, pero yo me entrené para esta pelea. He says, you know, I, he was doing exactly what his corner was telling him. Don't hurry up. Take your time. Four or five rounds. Box him. Keep him moving. Make him catch flies. And, you know, after that, just take over. And that's exactly what he did. He came out in the sixth and had him hurt. But Luis, as Joel told us before the fight, you thought that this would be over by the fourth round. It wasn't. What happened? He says, that's a little Cuban trick. Tell him we're going to go and get him after four because we know he's only a four-round fighter. And after that, we take over. So we just told him we're going to get him inside of four just to get the guy thinking. And then we took, him, we took over. A little Cuban trick. <laughs> he's, he's been hanging around his buddies over here robbing Adam as he gets his gloves back. Joel, let me ask you, did you feel as though you were at your best tonight? Was this your best performance? you think this was your best performance? Sí, esta es una de, de, de las peleas más fuertes porque García tiene el nombre, pero esta pelea ya me, me puso en, en la calidad de, de los 200 libras para que vean que soy mejor de 200 libras. Yeah, definitely. It was, you know, it was, it was a good night. Garcia es un experienced guy, but this proves tonight one more time I'm the best 130 pounder in the world. We got a couple of people who are standing here in this interview: Rob Schneider and Adam Sandler. Of course, you know them from all of their great entertainment. You guys are peering in here. Do you have any questions you want to ask, Joel? Uh, just uh, very happy uh, to be in the ring and not being uh, hit right now, Robbie. <laughs> Of course, you were one of the great fighters, weren't you? Uh, back in the day, this belt was mine, but I'm glad to give it over. Uh, grande, grande. I just it was big. It was big. He just hits big. He is big, and uh, we're just uh, happy to be uh, outside the ring. You know what I'm saying, baby? <laughs> what happened? Uh, oh, go ahead. Yo quiero mandarle un saludo a la gente de Miami que me está apoyando, a mis amigos Galvez, el Diobel, los que todos los jugadores de Miami también donde pelea. Dice lo que lo que está esperando de mí que meter un cabo. He says, I just want to say hi to all his friends in Miami, Garbe or Tato, yeah. all his friends Everybody in Cuba. He'll be back on Monday. Okay, well, wait, one second, a couple more fights, a couple more questions about the fight. In the sixth round, you lost a point. You didn't agree with the referee, Kenny Bayless. What happened? In the sixth round, you lost a point. You were not happy with what he did with the referee, right? No, he lost a point because I was not happy because I knew that the guy was good, so I was going to be able to work hard. He was very, very unhappy, but you know, he, he, the, 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 the shot wasn't underneath. He was the one that was holding, okay, because he was getting knocked out, and they took a point away from me, so he was kind of upset about that. Okay, free test next, correct? What about that? Próximo. Sí, Frita me puede curar cualquiera que venga, tú para el puerto para cualquiera. He says he's ready for anybody in the world. He is the best, 130 pound in the world. Let's get it on Freitas, Roberto Duran of the year 2000 against Joel Casamar. Freitas is next though, correct? 2000. Yeah, yeah. See? Let's make it happen, see? baby. Freitas, see. 100 meter 31, Last one. Oh, oh. so he's going to get knocked out in his next fight. Hold on a second, hold on a second. One more thought here. Mayweather against Corrales. How do you see that fight? He says, you know, it's a hard fight, you know, for both guys, but, you know, he'll, he'll take on either of them. Doesn't matter. He says he wants to say hi to his family in California and everybody in Miami, all, all his family in Miami, too. All right. Congratulations to you, Joel. Guys, good to see you. Thank you, Luis. Back to you, Steve. All right, Jim. Thanks very much, Luis.